Okay, hello, hello, and welcome back to another video. We <laughs> got a special guest with us today. Ooh. Yay! <laughs> We're doing another pillow talk, and to be fair, like, I'm so sorry it's taken us so long to get around to doing another one. I feel like everyone really, really liked the first one, and then we just didn't do a second no, one. Yeah. But we're here. We're back better than ever. We're in a different different setup, because obviously we're in the new apartment. We've been here for, what, how many months now? It feels like forever now. It feels it like forever, like but you know five, what? Five, four months? Yeah, I think it's like four. Like, it hasn't been long, but it feels like we've just been here for like a year. It's crazy. Yeah, it feels like we've been um, here longer than we did our last place. No, definitely. Are you ever scared of breaking up and having to delete all your content together? <laughs> I mean, I mean, at the first part, you know, you started reading out that question. I feel like I used to never be scared of like me and Jed breaking up. I was like, we're never gonna break up. Like it's like, this isn't happening. Like why would we ever? But I don't know, recently, not that I think that we are going to break up, but I definitely get like more scared of it. And I think it's because we've been together now for like such a long time and we're so like invested, not even like obviously emotionally invested, but like our lives are set up around each other now that that's like even scarier to me than just being in a relationship. Mm. Do you know what I mean? No, I get what you mean. I don't think I'm ever necessarily scared. Because, yeah, I don't no, think... No, yeah, it doesn't play on my mind. I don't think it's really going to happen. No, not at um, all. But I think, like, now that we've gone further down, it's like, we really know our families really well. And obviously, we have an apartment together. Yeah. And we're constantly talking about the future. And it's like, okay, well, what if that just gets ripped away out of nowhere? Do you know what I mean? That's yeah, what no, scares me. Yeah, I know what you mean but... through the content bit. Yeah, no, that's, that's... the thing. I was going to say, that's, like, the least of anyone's worries. Yeah, I think if you broke up with someone... And, like, I'd probably just leave the content up unless, like... Jed would leave it up because he thinks off it's doing doing more views yeah like i'd leave it up until obviously yeah i would be trying to move on or whatever i don't know what's your biggest red flag in a man and what's jed's biggest red flag in a woman a mine's woman. the biggest red flag in general lying i can't stand lying jed hates lying it's just like white lies in general yeah. like, i can't stand it like there's there's been a few you you like white lying no i know and i think it was like I don't know why I did it. Like when I was younger, I was such like a little fibber. Like that was me to a T and my parents will agree with that. And I don't know why, but like ever since like being with Jed, like even like, cause he gets like really upset, like even about like the smallest things, I which is like, it's completely understandable. I think it's just because like sometimes like, you know, when you're afraid to like hurt someone's feelings or like things like that, like, I feel but like that's the thing. If you're lying, you know you're in the wrong, and then you're making it even worse by lying. No, I know. So that's why I hate it. I think right so now, much. though, I'm on about like, you know, like, what, I'm talking like three years back now, like, you know, when your friend would come up to you being like, oh, do you think I look really nice? And sometimes, like, I'll be like, oh, yeah, you look lovely. When, like, in truth, like, they might yeah, see, have I looked don't even a do little that. different. If I don't, it, it's, hard, it's hard to give someone a fake narrative on something because, like, for instance, whenever you can't do, like, do I look nice? You mm -hmm. always look nice, but if I don't like a t-shirt you're yeah. wearing, I'd be like, I don't like a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. But like, I'd rather me tell her that than no, her thinking 100%. that I think she looks really... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> With Jed and like, the whole, like, white lie situation, like, I don't really, like, tend to do it anymore. And if someone does ask me an opinion, I'm really brutal with it, which I do actually feel really bad about. And I remember, like, when, for example, when we first met Saf, Saf would literally would say to me, like, oh, like, I had to, like, stop coming to you for an answer because you'd always tell me that I look, like, really, really nice because, mm. like, I just didn't have, like, that backbone to be, like, oh, you know what, like, I changed this or I changed First that. Thing, like, Saffron always messages me about if she thinks she looks nice in an Instagram picture. Yeah. Because she knows I'll give her a brutal <laughs> opinion. But, like, I feel like that's a good... I mean, obviously, like, there's delicacy, like, around... Yeah, telling there's someone nice the ways to put it. It's not like yeah. if someone doesn't look nice, you can't just go. You look fat in it. <laughs> like that's not that's no. not the way to do it, yeah. is it? Like, but that's Jed's like biggest red flag is like, well, little white lies. I don't know what my red. I don't really like. I've never really sat down and gone red flag, green flag. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm trying to think of something off the top of my head. It's like a really big red flag. But I feel like because we've been in a relationship for so long, like, my red flags aren't really, like, red flags towards you. Like, sometimes I might go, oh, that was a bit icky. But, like... Yeah, she finds me a big icky. No, I don't find you so, a big icky. Uh, that might be a, a red flag. Like, sometimes, like, there's, like, gross things that Jen will do, but I'm never like, oh, my God, that's a red flag. Like, I'll just be like, oh, that was a bit gross. But I feel like the lines between, like, our boundaries and, like, how, like, maybe, like, gross things get sometimes, like, is very Blurred. I just don't like people who manipulate. I actually, I don't like that. Mm, I do no, not I like that. You know, you have friends that are like through like situationships and things like that, and then like you hear their stories. And I'm like, ha, yeah. That's that's my, probably my biggest one. But obviously, like when you're in a situation where you are being manipulated, is, like, it's very hard to actually tell. Yeah. It's only from an outsider perspective that you kind of like realize what, what would be going say. on. What should I do if your boyfriend's friends send him pics of other girls in? 
bikinis on Insta. Yeah, I, I think, think that's no, I think that's overlapping a boundary. Do you know what I mean? Like the one, the friend should be respectful of. Oh, that mate's in a relationship. I'll go to another single. But friend. she's asking what she should do. I don't mean right. If I was her. <laughs> Sorry, it's you know like I have to. I'm a visual like learner. Like I have to actually see things written down for you to be able to process. If I was her, I'd literally say to the boy like, sort your friends out or sort yourself out. Like, no, I definitely tell think them, there's like, a boundary stop, there. Stop, I've got a girlfriend. Like he should tell them, stop, I've got a girlfriend. I literally think that that is a matter of having a conversation with your boyfriend, being like, I don't think you're respecting me as a person if you're responding to it in a specific type of way. I think if if. For example, I don't know, if one of Jed's friends keeps sending him bikini pics and he's responding being like, oh my god, so fit, I'd be like, what are you doing? Do you know what I mean? Like that, yeah, that is just it's like... It's also a matter of how would I portray you to my friends if they still think it's acceptable to be doing that? Yeah, that's also Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like yeah. it's, you would have, your boyfriend would have to be making it out like a joke or something like Yeah, because that's why, how I would why, see it. Yeah, no, that's very true. See, Jed sees things like in a really, really deep way. Like yeah, I would just try and put myself in a situation. Like, it would make me feel like absolute shit. Dealing with different sex drives. One, I think sex drives are like a completely normal thing and I think it's such a big spectrum. I think there's so many different factors that counter into sex drives because like not only can like stress affect your sex life, so can your hormones, how you've, whether you've had like a long day or a rough day, like there's so many different things. But also you've got like your bog standard, high sex drive, low sex drive. And I think in a relationship, I think it's completely fine if you're like polar opposites. I think it's just a matter of like having an understanding there, having a conversation about it, whether your low sex drive is to do with a person or whether it's just to genuinely do with like yourself. Yeah, I think it's just about like not sympathizing with one another, but like understanding that, do you know what I mean? Like finding a common ground between what works for both of you. I just think you need to be like, yeah, just be respectful of it. Mm. And like, if, if it's really bad, can you have a talk or... Yeah. I mean, obviously, like, it depends for the person and what's, like, of utmost upper priority in a relationship. Like, if that is sex for you. I feel like a relationship, like, there's so many things to a relationship. Well, no, like, it is a, it's a big part of a relationship. Yeah, no, like, it is. Especially when you're younger, but it's... It's just whether, like, how much you prioritise that, whether you need to find someone that has a very similar sex drive to you. I just found this funny. It's, it's nothing bad, but is it a red flag that a 31-year-old man cancels Sunday coffee slash first date because he's hungover? Oh, God. That's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? I mean, it's not awful. No. Like, I know I mean, plenty yeah. of 30-year-olds who actually probably look younger and act younger than me and they're living good um, and are mature, but... Mm. I don't think it's a red flag as such. I think it's a bit like, oh, God, like, that's annoying. And I think, like, for me, I would read that as, like, okay, like... Yeah, you can't be that interested. No, like, it's not even that. It's just, like, maturity levels. Like, if you knew you were going for a date the next day, would you really go out the night before and get absolutely sloshed with your mates down the pub at the right Yeah, but it could have been one of those where, you're, like, you're just out and then it just mm. kind of happens. I, I get it, but, yeah, yeah. if it's first date, I don't think it's a, be yeah. I don't think it's a massive red flag, but equally, like, I think the the way that I would, like, because to be fair, like, me and Jed didn't even, like, date, date. Like, we obviously were in lockdown, so we couldn't really do that. But for me, like, if I had people, like, cancelling on dates, like, I would just, like, kind of lose interest immediately because, like, I'd want someone to kind of, like, be like, oh, I've got a date tomorrow, like, brilliant, like, I'm going to that. Like, if someone yeah, cancels the thing on is, like, a date... at least he's being honest. He didn't try and come up with some rubbish excuse yeah. pretending, like, oh, he's just ill in general. Like, he was just honest. He was like, I would just, like, hungover. I know that I would hate if anyone ever cancelled on me for a date. Like, fair enough if you've got, like, a family emergency or, like, something's really come up. But, like, I just know that I'd be like, okay, well, you don't prioritise me. Bye -bye. So, I'm 18, I'm not interested in having a boyfriend, all my friends have boyfriends, and I do sometimes feel awkward when I hang out with them as I'm the only single one. How can I feel less awkward about this? I know not having a boyfriend was my own personal decision. You should feel no pressure, I think, especially when you're 18, 19, like, you're obviously just finishing A-levels, you've got, like, big decisions ahead of you. I think the biggest thing you can do is focus on yourself and focus, kind of, like, what you want to do. Like, there's plenty of time to have fun, there is no pressure whatsoever to get yourself into a relationship. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't, like... I think there is so many different like opportunities and possibilities that there is no reason to place that pressure on yourself. And I know that it can become this whole thing of, oh, all my friends have boyfriends, so like, yeah, maybe it would be nice to all go like out on a double date and all do things as a group and not feel like the one that's kind of like trotting along or being left behind. Like I, that, I can imagine that that is really hard. I feel like as long as you're not placing pressure on yourself to get a boyfriend, then your friends also shouldn't be placing a pressure 
to have a boyfriend just so that you can join in like you still can you can still have equally as much fun like and don't feel like you are third wheeling i think if your friends will want you there they will have you there the thing is that like, when i'm with my mates and like when one of them's single and like the rest of us are all in relationships because i feel like the majority of my mates are starting to get into relationships now but like i still have like my best mate is still single he's been single his whole life oh don't doubt him no, that's not Alvin him. He loves it. <laughs> um, no, he actually wants a relationship now, bless him. But like, there's, there's nothing to feel awkward about. Like, if anything, I enjoy it when I go out of him because I find it so funny. Like, Do you love wingmanning? Uh, yeah, it's like, it's the best yeah. thing, like, going out of a single mate and like, just seeing them struggle and just... <laughs> Jed! Right, scrap that. I think the thing is though, is everyone is at such a different point in their lives. Like, even if you're the same age as someone, like, someone might be ready for relationships, someone might not be, someone might be really enjoying their single time or someone might be really enjoying like their coupled up life. I think like as long as like you've got like your friendship there, I don't think there's anything to feel awkward about or feel like you've got to like catch up to them in the whole like relationship status. Like I think it's like as long as you have a solid friendship foundation. Yeah, there I don't I don't think it matters whether about. someone's single or in a relationship if yeah. you're in a friend group. Like just to me it doesn't matter at all. If anything, I prefer most of my friends being single because they've got more time for me. Do you think attraction should be initial? Can you be with someone if you aren't physically attracted to them? I kissed a boy who's in love with me and I don't know whether to give him a chance. What, so she's saying she thinks he's okay? No, she's just saying that there is there wasn't like that initial attraction. But he's really, really in love with her. The, this guy has kissed her. She must have found a, some sort of connection or attraction exactly. to kiss him back. So yeah, give it a go. I think physical attraction can be the same as the personality attraction and i think sometimes personality attraction can definitely win over looks but like i've definitely been in relationships where there hasn't been that initial attraction but their personality has made them more attractive but there is that always that like initial attraction because of course like to start a conversation with someone unless like you know them prior like there has got to be that kind of like oh like you're a bit of me like oh you look very nice for example jed sliding into my dms has gone that's a very like attractive girl. No, I, I was just bored. <laughs> there has to be both personality and physical attraction there because otherwise, like, it just doesn't. I work. don't think you need both. No, but I, I think, think there needs to be some kind of level. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you're thinking, oh god, he's really ugly, he has a nice personality, but in your head, you're thinking that your partner's ugly. Right. Imogen and I have just finished watching Love is Blind mm. this last season, and it's made me realize a lot. Oh attraction makes you initiate you actually liking him because you're then getting to know each other's personalities but you're looking for validation of them you're because you find them attractive you're looking for all of this and then you end up liking them more whereas if you just talk to someone who you don't find attractive you're just talking to them like you would as a friend mm -hmm. so i feel like you need the attraction to start off unless you it just kind of just happened there's definitely like so many things to like contextually factor into it especially like if you've known this guy for a really long time and you've really got on with him but you've never seen him in an oh you're attractive kind of light then that is kind of like something that you've got to explore and i think as long as you both kind of like have the understanding of we're exploring this not going into like a full-blown we're giving this a shot relationship then i think that's like that's fine well like, i just think we're all a bit greedy because, no, no, right, hear me out here. I think we're greedy. Because, I think our generation is greedy nowadays. Can I speak? <laughs> I think we're all greedy because I think we'd all be a bit happier if we didn't go for the most attractive person we've seen. If we just got to know everyone's personalities, no matter how they looked, I guarantee you we'd all find someone, not all, a lot of people would find someone who suits their personality better. Is this your way of telling me I'm mediocre? Yeah, I, I, I knuckle down a couple to find a good personality. <laughs> no, um, I actually do know what you mean. I feel like in today's society, I feel like everyone has set like this, like such an unmatched, unparalleled like standard of like- the, Before they've even met someone. Yeah, like, that it needs to be this, the, the classic, like tall, dark and handsome with a six pack and a really great personality that's really, really funny and can have like a joke around, but then is really smart and really rich. But then that's the thing, they find someone tall, dark, handsome, mm. 
six pack, personality's average, and yeah. they're like, I'll settle because he's everything else they wanted looks yeah. And that's why I think people mess up a lot. Anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Make sure to comment, subscribe, like down below. Um, flood my DMs if you've got any more questions. I do want to start doing these like a little bit more regularly. <laughs> Just like, for fuck's sake, I've got to talk more. Again? Um, no, I enjoy these videos. I get to stay in bed. <laughs> no, I think like we probably just need to get better at like wording things and not going on so many. Yeah, like, I mean, you surprised tangents. me with this video, so I wasn't really ready. Yeah. Anyways, see you in the next one.